Travis got to do you? Yeah, names, yeah. So I can remember them all. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our pre-match press conference to preview our game against Leicester City this weekend. We'll start off with Peter from Sky Sports. Sure, very good afternoon. Nice to see you. Very well. Yes, good, thank you. Can I just start maybe by dividing your missing players up into the maybe the sick and the injured? Can we go through names? Yeah, I've bought a list just so I don't forget anyone. Uh, Jared's making progress. Uh, hopefully gets involved in a game this weekend. It's looking like he will do um, with the under-21s. James Tarkowski, sorry. Um, we're hopeful. Um, trained today, so there's no reaction. Uh, Nathan Patterson, same as Jared. Uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Looks okay today. He was back in on the grass, so we're hopeful that his uh, illness is gone. Uh, Jimmy Garner is still not in uh, with illness. Uh, Indressa, unfortunately, has had a family bereavement, so he won't be um, here. Um, Miko is through the illness. He was in today, so we're hopeful that's um, him done. Um, Shames is still injured, unfortunately, going to be longer than we hoped, um, so that's not going to be a, a quick situation. We're not sure on the timescales yet. Yusef's making good um, progress, but obviously quite a long-term injury. Um, Armando, he's he's making progress, but obviously a longer-term injury. And Kino um, is getting checked out today, just having a precautionary scan to make sure he's OK. That is some list. Have you known a list like it's that in your management years? Not when you're carrying such a, a, a sort of small squad anyway, so it's not, um, it's not been that helpful. Um, on and off from pre-season, it's been awkward run. Um, and obviously this season we've been as oh, sorry this this week we've been as stretched as we've been, particularly for the cup game. The other night, you know, people were questioning why did I change the team? <laughs> this is what it is. Unfortunately, this is the reality, and that was the reality of the players we had fit for that game. So we're hopeful on a couple of these coming through tomorrow and training. So we'll have to wait and see. How on earth do you prepare for a game when you you're juggling so many players? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult because you, you're going, you know, the other day we had we had the morning because three players came in injured, so, uh, uh, sorry, ill, sorry. So we, we just had an, an hour in the morning to to get the, the sort of ideas on to the players the best we could, the set pieces, et cetera, et cetera, and, and put them out there. We're hopeful that tomorrow we get a few bodies back, so at least we've got a day's prep um, before we go to Leicester. Look, it's, it's a rare reality, but it is still a reality. I've, I've not experienced this many injured and, and ill in, in such a short space of time. It's just one of the things at the moment. You know, a lot of things seem to be um, big challenges for us. As well as the challenges of the, of the sickness and, and the injured, you're having to think your way through ending this, this frustrating start to the season that you've had. Um, your teams traditionally don't concede goals. You've conceded 13. So as a, as a former defender, what have you been doing on the training ground this week to, just to try and move things on and, and maybe instill a little bit more confidence? Well, it's hard this week um, because of the, the, what we've just spoken about. So, But generally speaking, just reaffirming to them the whys and wherefores of, of why we had such a good record here last season, um, you know, with clean sheets and, 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 and keeping games tight. Um, change of personnel can affect that quite obviously with, with injuries and illnesses and new players coming in, other players going out. You know, we've... We brought in, you know, four players who I think are, are young and, and will grow into the Premier League, and we're seeing that. We're getting them some game time now, which is helpful. And then they haven't got the depth of experience the outgoing players had, so that has to mould into the team as well. So trying to bring that all together at once and making it work at both ends of the pitch is obviously the challenge for me and every other manager. But you look at your next three or four games, and you've got Leicester, you've got Palace, you've got Ipswich shortly after that. Those three teams all directly above you. So that, do you sense that? A really critical period of games now coming up for Everton. I, th I think I've spoken endlessly about it. Every every part of the pre Premier League season is critical. You know, you've got to. You don't design to get off not to a good start. Trust me, no manager does, no team do, no player does. You know, we wanted to get off to a better start than we than we've got off to, but we haven't. So therefore, we've got to find different ways of operating, five different ways of, of of producing to go and win performances, and 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 like I say, you'd always take a lucky one. You don't want to build on it, but you take one. Um, but we had this start last season, so that's a bit of a head-scratcher as well. You know, we, <laughs> lots of challenges there, but we've had that the last season and I think the season before that, before I was here as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to fathom out that side of it, but the immediate thing is to correct it as quick as possible. The point I'm making is that their team's in and around you and you'd want to be winning those games, otherwise... You want to be, winning, you want to be winning all games, it's not that easy, quite obviously. The fact they're in and around you doesn't make it easier. 
just makes it another challenge. So we've got to take it on and, and be clear-minded and, and put a team out there that we believe can win. I know Goodison can be a fabulous um, arena when things are going well, but I just wonder on, on this occasion, <coughs> does it help in a way sometimes playing away from home? Because you can, you can, you can, teams will come onto you, you can play on the counter, and maybe there's not that pressure from the crowd that you get at Goodison. <laughs> Yeah, you can't define that. I mean, the away record when I got here wasn't good enough and then we changed that and we got it better. Then the home record suffered a little bit. Then we got the home record corrected at the end of last season. Now the away record's mentioned again. Finding the balance of both records is, is obviously the, the biggest challenge across, well, arguably not your, so your Man City's and the like. Um, although often theirs isn't quite as good away. But it's, it's very difficult, you know, and trying to get it. First things first is home and away. Is we want to play at Goodison. I make that clear. But you've got to find points, you've got to find wins wherever you can. So at the moment, it's getting a win. That's the first ball call, wherever that may come. That's the biggest challenge at the moment. And that's the one right in front of us. So whether it's home or away, that's the main importance is to get a win. Thanks for your time. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks for to Fraser at Premier League Productions. Uh, as far as Leicester are concerned, I mean, just how big a, a boost for everybody here would it be if you were to pick up that first win against the Leicester City side that have just been promoted? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, like I say, just because they've been promoted doesn't mean they're not a good outfit. You know, they've still got some good players. They've kept hold of a number of players who have played in the Premier League. Um, we've got to go there with the right frame of mind, I think. You know, with some of uh, the, the, the segments in our performances, scoring two away and, and that sort of thing, and, and two at home. And we've got to re remember that we can score goals, but obviously we've got to do better with the defensive side of things and find that balance over 90 whatever minutes are played. You know, that's the, that's the challenge that's right in front of us. And how much of a challenge is it for you as a manager when you see the good periods that you have had where you've been a couple of goals in front, but then the, the small periods of negative where other teams have come back to you? How, how do you go about trying to sort of accentuate and make sure that the players concentrate on those positive bits rather than trying to get rid of those? Yeah, when, well, I mean, that's, that's what your coaching team, your management ideas are for, you know, to make sure that they can find a consistency. I think we did, particularly at the end of last season, I talk about the consistency within a performance, not just week in, week out, you know, and I think that's something that we haven't achieved so far this season, that consistency to see a game through in totality. And, you know, arguably the Bournemouth game, we were doing that until the last seven or eight minutes. And that was hard to take and hard to understand, but then you have to try and correct that. So you work with the players again. Um, and it's helpful if you've got a balanced group to work with, of course, and the consistency with your own group. Um, but yeah, just reminding them of, how we do it, why we do it, game management, all them things. But it's a constant, you know, it's not something people sort of presuppose the opposite where they just think you sort of let all them go. You don't, you know, this is a constant progress of, or constant work to try and progress, sorry, to find a, a way of working that can win games and win more often. Thanks, Fraser. We'll go to Shemaine. <coughs> Hi, Sean. Uh, Hi. You're down to 12 first teamers on Tuesday morning? Out, outfield, yeah. Yeah. How many do you reckon? You'll have the three, 15, well, I've just named the list of ones who can't be or, or the ones that might not be. So we're hopeful on um, Miko being back around it. We're hopeful on Dominic. They, they came through today, so we're hopeful that's clear. Kino, we're waiting on news. Um, uh, Taki, we're hopeful. Train today, but we've got to see there's no reaction. Um, so they're the main ones. Jay, uh, Jimmy's come, gone home for, uh, still unwell. And Jack Harrison, actually, I've got to mention him. He's gone home unwell, but we're hopeful that's something out of nothing. So we'll wait and see out of them. But certainly we'd imagine that Dom and uh, Miko will be the two you immediately look at and hope that they're, they're back in the fold. There was a stat this week that Ever Everton's start is the worst from all 96 teams in, the, in Europe's top five leagues. Is there sort of embarrassment around that, or is it someone has to be there? It's just about no, not at all. There's no embarrassment in, in what I do and what I attempt to do, or for my team. Team here, I couldn't be more proud of the players here. They've come through some enormous challenges. There's more coming. It's quite obvious. So this is another challenge. Them sort of stats are not relevant. We'll go up and down the stats ladder in one way or another. You don't want them, but they're there. So therefore, to correct them, that's a challenge. And you spoke about the, the reaction from the fans after Ashley Young was brought on. Better was taken off the other night. Do you, as manager, feel you've still got the backing of the fans here? The, the fans come and go and they decide, you know, whatever it is. All I can do is work as hard as I can at work. You know, I've never, it's never something that I've overthought. I respect the fans here. I've made that absolutely abundantly clear. Um, the way they've supported me, the team and the, and the club over many years before my time here. So there's absolutely no question in that. All I do is work as hard as I can to put a team together to win games and in some, you know, in 20 months here, in some very, very trying circumstances. And, uh, 
you know, handling that amongst trying to win games, amongst the development, amongst the money, try and save money, that is, it's a big challenge. So all I can do is that and work as hard as I can. And the idea of being, I've mentioned it many times, hero and zero, zero to hero, it comes and goes very quickly. You know, I try and stay steadfast to what's in front of me and that's the truth of, the, of what we're trying to achieve here. And football clubs, uh, pl players at football clubs nowadays have a lot of support networks uh, when things are not going well or when they're going well. Do managers have that sort of... I don't, I don't, what do you mean support like networks? Psychiatrists and stuff like that. Oh, right, yeah. Is that because I'm ever a manager? Uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't rely on that. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, believe it or not, you may think differently, but I'm pretty uh, mentally clear on the challenge that's right in front of me and on my own part in that. Who do you sort of turn to when it is in tough times? If people need that, then it's available. Um, yeah, of course, why not? You know, if, you, if, you, if you're if you having challenges in your life, whatever they may be, and players, people presuppose, you know, every player goes out there and why, why they're playing less, why... So we don't even understand, and, and nor should they. You wouldn't expect sports to understand every part of the industry. Players still have lives, you know. They still have lives away from what the challenges of just being a footballer. And sometimes that comes into consideration with the, with their form, their their well-being, and that's an important part of modern life, not just football life. Everyone, I think, for the last couple of years in modern life, mental health and well-being has been a massive subject. Is the job of a football manager is it a lonely job? Is when you read the headline, everything. Is yeah, it mostly it mostly is, but that's what you sign up for. You know, there's no manager I know who thinks it's not going to have its moments of being lonely. That's just the reality of the job. So I've, I've been doing it quite a long time now. So footballers can feel like that as well. Though it's not just managers. You know, footballers can feel like that because it can be, you know, in things. But it can be when you're going well. You know, everyone thinks it's only when you're not. Yeah, but I remember being in Liverpool. Everyone was jumping for joy. I didn't. I didn't. I just went back to my flat and went to sleep because I knew the job wasn't over. The bigger picture job was for me to get done as a manager and that's to make sure we safeguard ourselves in the Premier League. So when that was done, I enjoyed that moment, but the rest of it is for other people. So that's that's a, a measure of what it is. It's not just about when things are going against you. It's about when things are going for you as well. It can be equally lonely. Does it feel like the world's against you? No, not at all. It just feels like the reality of what I'm in. This is the industry I'm in. I signed up for it. I've been in it all my life. This is the reality. I'm absolutely clear-minded of what it is. And now it's just challenging myself to find a way of changing it. Thanks, man. We'll go to Julia. <clears throat> Just going back to your list then, so Jared Branthwaite will only be in the under twenty ones this weekend. He won't make the first team squad. No, he's not he's not had any football no. for, for a long time. And you've got and, uh, Nathan as well. And potentially no James Tarkovsky, potentially no Michael Keane. That is exceptionally light in a very small squad. It is. If they aren't available what is your plan B for that? Have you looked at the under twenty ones? Because this potentially be a very, very yeah, we'll young centre-back just, well, we'll just, just find a way of making the team operate the best it can. So have you got a plan in case they aren't? Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting on news and we're hopeful, by the way, um, on both them players. But yeah, we've, we've got an idea of what we'd do next. Um, low possession is something that Everton have been in the headlines for. So I had a look. It's been below 40% in all of the defeats played so far, apart from against Bournemouth, which was 47, so below 50. Can you win games in the Premier League with low possession? And are you concerned about that? Yeah, I think I think Leicester won the league, didn't they, with, with the lowest possession? I think um, known, I think that was right. You'd have to double check that. Yeah, look, I mean, I think it was about 10 years ago when everyone decided possession is the only thing in football that can make you win, and it's been obviously radically proven wrong. Um, you want to use the ball, but you want to use it wisely. The other night, there was a lot made of the possession. The Southern, they play a game where we get the possession maps, don't forget. Most of their football is in the back third of the field. So, you know, not many players go chasing up there. That, would, that wouldn't be the right idea, let's say, tactically. So you've got to use the ball wisely when you get it and the other night we broke on them so many times and, and I think it was fair to say that the best chance of the game you take them and no one even mentions it so winning winning changes perception it's simple as that you know and no one mentioned our, our lack of possession at the end of last season five home wins uh, beating Liverpool no one mentioned it then it's just these are the challenges of modern management you know when things are going against you everything gets mentioned everything gets dissected picked to bits that's the way it goes when you win in, everyone decides it's the right way of winning, of course. And uh, we've seen that with many managers, particularly in the Premier League, and, and ones who are, are people I respect. Is it different, though, when it's low possession against somebody like Liverpool and the pressure a Merseyside derby brings compared to, if we just look back to this week, Southampton at home, newly promoted side? Would people expect Everton to have a higher possession percentage, though? Um, I don't know whether they do or they don't. I expect to win. 
I think that's what people expect. The rest of it is conjecture. You know, that's what the Evertonians want. They want to win. Um, and I think that's the challenge of what we've got to change because we haven't won games. I think the rest of it follows on making the best use of players. That's my belief. What's the best use of the players? What's the best use of the style? I saw Ancelotti's interview, you might have seen it, when he mentioned about being here. And he said, a goalkeeper who can smack it down the pitch, in, not in his words, of course, and had a big centre forward who could keep hold of it. So he said, that's what I did. I got him to kick it to him. He's a pretty decorated manager, you know, so I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but that was his opinion of being at Everton Football Club and the best way of getting his players to win. So all I'm looking for is a way that can hopefully find a way that Evertonians can be proud of the team for the way they're playing and hopefully win, of course. They're the, they're the plans find the both is the perfect join. Have you done a reset? I'm thinking back to, we had a press conference in here after the 6-0 at Chelsea last season. and You said there'd been some meetings, some very strong words and and kind of then a reset. Is, th is there anything you've done like that now or do you not feel it's at that point? It's different terms. Though. We haven't had a group to reset. You know, every week it's been changing. So it's, it's very difficult. You know, then we had a group who were more or less what they were. And I thought, right, OK, we know what we're doing now. This is the group. It's been there for a long time last season, if you know what I mean, relatively speaking. We've got changes to this group. Quite obviously, players leaving, players coming, and then uh, individual problems with fitness. So we haven't really had the chance to look at the group and play them games with the same outfit and go, right, OK, where are we at? But there are some themes, of course, that we've got to correct. That, that gets spoken about. So you, don't, you, you probably can't know your best starting eleven then, can you, given what's gone on? Well, I've got it in my mind, um, but obviously I haven't had it fit yet. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Julia. Any further questions in the open section? We'll go to Alan and then Will. <coughs> Sean, do you have an idea when Jared might be available for the first team? Uh, not yet, no, because he's, he's yet to play his first game, which hopefully will be this weekend as long as the next few days go well and then we'll take it from there. Obviously, he's established quite a reputation for himself, but given the amount of time he's been out, will kind of fans need to be a bit, bit patient with him? Well, it's not, not about being patient. It's just making sure a player has the chance to play and be fully fit. So it's more that, you know, making sure his body is ready to go and take on the challenges of what the Premier League behold but still a, a boost for you that he's kind of at this stage now where he can play some football. Well, it's a, it's a boost if he comes back through it. That's the main thing, because I don't like talking about players' injuries because you never know. But if he comes through this next period and then he's fit and ready, of course it's a boost, yeah, because he's been a very good player. Thank you. Thanks. Finally, Will. Sean, the way you ended last season was really positive and it seemed like there was a little bit of momentum. I understand that your remiss is to, to safeguard the club. I don't think anyone was getting ahead of themselves, but why do you think you haven't been able to take that momentum into this campaign so far? Well, like I say, if you had the same team and the same people and you'd like to build on that and move it forwards, but we, we are what we are. You know, we had to sell players, we had to bring money in, we had to balance that out with money going out, we had to bring fresh players in and a younger style of player to try and build them for the future to safeguard the finances of the club. It's a different model, you know, so the summer bought a different, a different being, a different group, a different way of working. And then you add in a few injuries and all of a sudden you're a bit stretched and before you know it, you're into the season. So it's been a different dynamic. So it's almost, you know, it, rather than a continuation, it was a restart. Here we go again. This is a different model now. You know, we've got to bring costs down. We've got to balance out the books. We've got to bring money in and we've got to get players in who can develop into the club, not ones who maybe in the past have bought players at an age where un unlikely they move on for bigger money in the future. So the, the model has changed. Last season you had a lot of stability at the back, but this season has been difficult, especially at right back. Roman Dixon maybe showed his good side and his, his side he needs to work on, on on Tuesday night, giving away the free kick. But is there a case that you know you've had to say the players have had to learn on the job in the past? Is there a case to get a bit? Yeah, of I mean it's it's, it's it's amazing. I mean Harrison Davies, he's seventeen, his family are there. What a what a great honour to pull on the shirt at such a young age with his family in the stadium as well. So great in that respect. Um, but yes, fast tracking these players has been more or less a constant since not so much when I first got here, but the summer when we, you know, uh, a lot of players left the club, let's put it that way. And then we've had to sort of integrate the, the, the younger players quickly um, into the situation without even loan periods, without, you know, getting a taste of what football's about. But that's just, look, I mean, these are, these are some of the challenges that are right there. They're right there. Everyone can see them. I know them. Everyone knows them. So they're just some of the challenges that are along the way of the recent history of Everton Football Club as we trim and cut and trim and cut, whilst trying to develop players that can go into the first team and, and handle what it is to be part of Everton Football Club. And if Michael Keane is absent, Jake O'Brien, I assume, will, will come in. Have you made his of his progress so far? Yeah, I mean, he's adapting to the, the, the what it is, you know, and it's, uh, 
like I told you, the nuts and bolts, the nuances of the Premier League are different, without a doubt. Um, so, but I think he's adapting well. Um, we want a continuation of that. I thought Jasper showed the other night more about what he's about. You know, that was good to see. Um, I know he, he had a couple of chances where you'd hope he'd put them away, but he showed more about what he's about. So he's beginning to learn and, and get used to what it is. Um, the biggest challenge is when they got on the real stuff, you know, and the, and the Premier League whistle blows, because that's, that's always the biggest challenge when they come from no, uh, sorry, when they come from a situation where they haven't played in the Premier League to picking it up quickly and learning about the Premier League. Thanks, Will. Thanks, everyone. We'll now move on to the uh, Thank you. paper section.